Hi, I'm Derek Mooney and this is Read Right Now. Welcome to the programme. This week I thought I'd check out some art. So I've come to Dublin City Gallery, the Hugh Lane, here in Dublin City Centre. The gallery is known for its modern and contemporary art. They have something like 2,000 works in the collection here. Now don't be put off if you've never been inside of a gallery before because admission is free and that means that anyone can go in and have a browse around. Having an interest in art isn't something that comes naturally to everyone. Sometimes it develops over time. It took years for Tony Geraghty, our learner this week, to discover his artistic side. Before he started out on his learning journey though, he faced a major challenge. You would get a bit of work here and there for a period of time and it would be short. Because sometimes they'd want to give you a promotion if you stayed too long in the job. Which most people would be a good thing. But to a person that can't read and write well, you jacked up and moved on to the next. But he's faced that challenge and developed a totally different outlook. Between the reading and the painting, you look forward and doing things, or look forward to um, coming in in the morning, getting up in the morning. As we'll see, learning involves much more than just taking in new facts or doing exercises. It's also about knowing what helps you to learn, and Terry will have more to say on this. Thanks, Derek. We're here at the Foss Centre in Bishopstown in Cork, and we'll be looking at strengths, things that will help you in your learning. We're going to be looking at three strengths in particular. Confidence in your abilities, optimism about your plans, and control over your emotions. These are very important strengths for learning, so come back to us later. One way of thinking about your learning is to look at it like a collection of pieces of knowledge you're building up bit by bit. Just as the fabulous collection of art in this gallery was started by one man, but built up over time. So to help you add to your collection, we have our usual learning points. This week we're looking at writing names and addresses, using a dictionary, and rhyming words. Something which could become a really important part of your learning collection is the new Read Right Now workbook. It covers everything we deal with in the programme, plus a lot more. And it has some very useful exercises and worksheets. To get your free copy, simply call 1-800-2020-65. Right, let's get going. <laughs> Tony Geraghty grew up in Dublin's inner city, and like many people who experience difficulty with reading and writing, his problems started early in life. Some people say I'm a drunken baby. My father was drunk one night, and I did be jealous, mate. So. In the school, there was nothing. The people, I was supposed to were all right, but I couldn't seem to be buckled down and learn anything. We were barely writing my own name. I think my mother learned me how to do that. So, I used to first opportunity when I went to the school. What I used to do was try and get down into the yard and climb over the wall. I don't think you were even missed. And then you had the roll call. He called out your name. And I think that's the only way they missed you. Because there was that many in the, in the, in the classes. I was 12 years of age when I left the school. Forward oh, having it. I read with the skill master and he brought me up to the board and I couldn't do what, it, what, what was on the board. And in the process of not being able to do it, he gave me a smack in the back of the head, which sent me flying down the, down between the rows of the seats. So on my way down, hitting the floor, I saw the pelagal under the, under the seat where you put your skill back. And I was then, then I took out the wound and I tried to shield him with it. But uh, it was only a pedagogy. It wouldn't have done a lot, a, a lot of damage to him. But that's when he brought me to, f to the headmaster and, and offered me a position down in Dangle or Arte. So we declined the offer, my thing. I walked out there, went to clean, and wrote the Ludis. They used to give you dockets with addresses on them. 
and you wouldn't be able to read, you wouldn't be able to read that in them days. But life wasn't dull. You made it. You could buy cream, one would say. This week's learner, Tony, told us that he'd problems reading addresses when making deliveries. So let's look at reading and writing addresses. When you need to post a letter to someone, it's important to write their name and address correctly in the centre of the envelope. The name of the person you're sending the letter to comes first, and you usually start with the person's title. A title is an abbreviation for, or a shortened form of, a longer word. Mr. is used for all men, Mrs. is used for married women, Miss is used for unmarried women, and Ms. can be used for all women. A full stop is used after a person's title, except after Miss. All these titles begin with a capital letter. In this case, the person's name is Mr. John Ryan. If it's a business letter, you'd normally put the person's job title underneath their name. John Ryan is sales manager in this example. The name of John's company is Centrix Cookers. Here we see that Centrix Cookers is located at 26 Bank Street. Street can also be abbreviated or shortened to ST full stop. Road is often shortened to RD full stop and Avenue to AVE full stop. It's normal to put a comma at the end of every line of an address except the last line where you put a full stop. Underneath the name of the street, we put the name of the town, Roundwood. If the letter's going to Dublin, you'll also need to put the number of the Dublin district. For example, Rohini is in Dublin 5, while Thomas Street is in Dublin 8. Finally, we put the name of the county. The word county is shown by the letters C and O with the full stop afterwards. In this example, Roundwood is in County Wicklow. It's useful to put a return address on the back of the envelope so that if it can't be delivered for whatever reason, the post office will know who to return it to. So you can see that most addresses are written in the same format, with a new line used for each part of the address. Being able to write names and addresses properly is a very useful skill to have, whether you want to write a business letter or simply stay in touch with friends. So take it slowly and think about what you want to write line by line. Now Terry's looking at three strengths which should help you with your learning. Confidence, optimism and having control of your emotions. A strength is a good quality or ability that makes someone effective. It's important to identify your learning strengths and to develop them. So let's take a look at three of them. The first is a sense of confidence in your abilities. If you believe, I could never write an essay like that, I could never read a book that long, I could never paint a sign like this, well then you probably won't. But if you believe that you can succeed, I could paint like that. Other people have read that book, so could I. Well then it's much easier to make it happen. Look at the exercise in the workbook on strengths and write down all the things that you're good at. You may be surprised at how many strengths you do actually have and this will boost your confidence. The reason why I went back to education, I got into trouble with the Lord a bit. And I had a couple of problems. One was a drinking and the other was education. So, I had to deal with the two of them. So I went down to Foss to try and get a job. I got the job, but I went to fill the farm in, I couldn't. So they recommended me to go to Dublin Adult Learning Centre, Mount George Square. But when I came here nine years ago, I was very upset. The thoughts of going in here was killing me. And these steps are like mountains. And literally trying to climb up them was just an ordeal for me. But now today, when I climb up the steps, it's great because I'm going into land so Well, this is the room where it all started, roughly around nine years ago. It's uh, not nine years of study, but it's nine years of walking in the building, plus learning as I went along. 
there was, uh, I have great memories of this room when I started. How sure you can help, how I felt at the time. But now we've got over that and things is going great. So when I come into this room, I just ponder around and look around and it brings back good memories. And this is the library. And these are all the books that I had an opportunity to read and look at over the years. There was uh, fiction, there's adventure, there's read right now, crosswords and, and quizzes. I brought home over Dick to look at it. It was a, a weekend and I already had a weekend planned. But in spite of that, when I started Moby Dick, I wanted to see what happened. And each page was another page, and another page, and another page. So all the programmes that I normally look at, at home on the television or whatever, was all passed by, and it was time to go to bed. The next day when I got up, it was back into Moby Dick again. So come Monday, I was able to come in and have a discussion with the children on Moby Dick. Learning to read the dictionary made all the difference, because it's... Um, if you're at home and you're looking for a word, well, what you do is you look up the dictionary, especially if you want to write it. But then if you come across a word in a book, you can also look up the dictionary to find out what does the word mean. And that makes the book simple enough. Since I came back learning, it has changed. It changed right around because reading, writing and spellings, that to me was, it's like one of the wonders of the world. I feel that, to me, the feeling that I get out of it is nice, it's a nice feeling. And the feeling that it gives me, it overpowers me sometimes, because I'd like to do more. But maybe one day I will be able to do that. Dictionaries are very useful for finding out the meanings of new words, but they vary in size and content. Most dictionaries have two columns on each page, so look carefully along each column for the word you're looking for. You'll also see guide words at the top of each page to help you find words more quickly. All words in a dictionary are entered in alphabetical order, so the words that begin with A are at the beginning and words starting with Z are at the end. In his job as caretaker, our learner Tony might often use a brush to paint a door. The word brush, which begins with the letter B, comes before door, which begins with the letter D. Sometimes it's not easy to find the meaning of a new word very quickly because dictionaries give you a lot of information. The word being defined in a dictionary will generally be in bold to make it stand out from the other information. You can use dictionaries to find out how words are used, whether they're nouns or verbs. When you look up a new word, you may see many different meanings depending on its context. Normally, each meaning of the word is numbered. The numbers show us how many meanings there are. Here we can see that there are three possible different meanings for the word fabric. It can mean cloth, the structure of a building, or the structure of an organisation, such as when we say the fabric of society. So the next time you come across a new word, don't be afraid to use a dictionary to learn more about it.